So last week we created our first stylized head sculpt and now it's time to give them some hair to add a little bit more style and expression. And I'm going to show you my preferred method for creating stylized hair in Blender. But as always, my name is Keelan and if you're ready to jump in with me today, grab yourself a nice hot drink and let's get into it. Okay, you welcome back everybody. My name is Keelan. Hope you're all feeling good and ready to jump in with me today. And it's probably worth knowing that if you haven't done the first video in this tutorial series, I leave a link on the screen somewhere and in the description where you can follow me along to create this nice stylized head sculpt and I take you through some of the fundamentals of sculpting in the Blender. But by all means, if you're just looking to learn how to create some effective and simple stylized hair in Blender, feel free to follow along with some of your own sculpts too. But with that, let's go ahead and jump on into the video. And as usual, keep your eye down the bottom left here for my mouse clicks and my keyboard shortcut inputs. So let's initially start with the eyebrows and this should be nice and simple because we're not going to be doing any sculpting for the brows. It's primarily just going to be box modeling once again with a couple of extra little tips that I think I can give you. So let's start by holding shift and then right clicking on the area where we want to add the brow. And for this I'm just going to be adding in a plane. So shift A. I'm going to go to mesh, plane and then let's rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis. Scaling this down and bringing this out somewhere like that. And in front view, I'm just going to adjust and shape this to the general size that I want. Maybe something like that. But when it comes to brows, obviously, we want this to be nice and flush with the head. And in order to do that, we're going to be taking advantage of the shrink wrap modifier. So if I add that, that's going to let us choose a target. And then when we do the mesh right here, this plane is going to flatten itself to the target. The only issue is right now, our plane is just four sides and there's no mesh or no geometry there for it to bend. So let's tab into edit mode and using the loop cut tool with control R, let's add in one, two extra loop cuts here by scrolling our mouse wheel up. Then we can left click, right click. And now this has those extra little edges there, which will allow it to bend around the head. So back into object mode, let's select our target here. Boom. And just like that, in front view, you can see we can adjust our eyebrow position and size, but it's going to try its best to keep itself nicely flat against that head. I think that's looking pretty good about this. So we can come in here and apply our modifier. And now you can see it's nicely settled here. That is the new position for our shape. But we are going to need to reset those scale variables once again. So if I come into item, you can see our scale values are a little bit all over the place from where I was adjusting it. So we can do control A just to reset those nice and beautifully. Okay, cool. And to close that up. And now we need a bit of thickness because right now it's a flat plane. We can't see it. So just like good old fashioned box modeling, let's add a solidify modifier. And I'm going to increase my offset here so it comes out towards the front. And then adjusting the thickness to something that we like. I may be playing around with the offset so it sits slightly in the head. And then close that up. Let's add in a subdivision surface modifier. I like to go for a subdivision of around three. Right click shade smooth. Something like that. And I am also going to add another shrink wrap modifier. And then make in the head the target. But you will notice that we're going to lose it here and that's because the shrink wrap right now is the last in the modifier stack and we generally need this to be first in this case. That way it's going to shrink wrap before it starts applying the solidify modifier and the subdivision modifiers. That way we can still have this effect of moving it around and it's going to try its best to keep itself nicely flush with the head. But let's go ahead and adjust this to something that we'd like. Maybe play around with our offset a little bit more. But this, once again, is preference. And of course, we need two brows. So finally, let's go back into modifiers, add a mirror modifier. And then the head is going to be our mirror object. And I think something like that will do. And you can tinker with the shape as much as you like in this case. Till you find something that you're happy with. But I think some of the guy looks pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of stylized sculpting for the hair. Alright, so in order to do the hair, of course, when it comes to stylized hair, there's lots of different methods and everybody has their preference depending on the style you're looking to go for. But I'm just going to go for a nice sculpted minimalistic look. And to do that, I want to create a nice base for the hair first. So let's initially move our 3D cursor back to the head. So I'm going to select the head. Shift S, cursor to our selected object. 
And I want to start with a nice bulky shape inside that I can sculpt and start moving and dragging out to give us a nice base layer. So let's do Shift A, and we could do this with a, and we could do this perhaps with a basic UV sphere. And then let's scale it down. And in my right side view, let's just move it to relatively into place. This doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to go ahead and adjust this anyway very shortly. Maybe something like that. And now let's go ahead and apply a scale before we do any sculpting. Jump it into sculpt mode on our UV sphere here. Let's enable X axis mirroring. And I'm going to press G to make sure I'm using the grab tool. Use an F to adjust the size of my cursor. And now let's go ahead and just drag this around till we've got a nice area and some good coverage for where the hair is generally going to sit. But I think something like that will do for now. At this point, I just want to remesh this just like we did before. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a little bit down here for the sideburns. So let's go ahead and jump into our remesh tool and test this out with something like 0.02 maybe. Okay, how much geometry do we have here? Mm, that's not too bad. Maybe we'll try something like that for now. And then I'm, I'm just going to use the draw tool here. And I'm just going to draw in a little bit of sideburns. Something like that. Nothing too fancy. Perhaps I'll drag these around with the grab tool again. Okay, cool. I'm going to smooth this over while holding shift here to use the smooth tool. And maybe something like that will do for the base for now. I think that's looking pretty good. So this is where you can get creative now and start adding in some interesting shapes to really create some cool styles. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and jump back into object mode. And I generally start uh, by doing some box modeling. So let's go ahead and add in a new cube. What I'm, what I'm looking to achieve here is a bit of a quiff that goes up in the center. And to do that, let's go ahead and utilize this cube. I'm going to bring him up here for now. And then just do some good old fashioned box modeling using the subdivision surface modifier. Smooth this down. And in my right side view, let's scale him to, oh whoops, I accidentally selected everything, undo that. Select the fringe and then S and Y to thin it out slightly. And I'm just going to bring it into place maybe around here. I want to make sure this is quite large. But then tabbing into edit mode, I want to press 3 to select faces. And selecting this top face, I'm just going to put it like this. And using control and right click, I'm just looking to give a bit of a nice quiff shape like that. And then I'm going to use the X review and then make sure I have vertices selected. I'm just going to box select these and move them around to find a general shape that I like. But of course, as I always say guys, feel free to tinker with this and create as many different styles that you like. This is just one of my preferred ways to do this. But I think that's looking pretty cool and probably worth thinning it out just a little bit at the front here. Coolio, and now I think we can just go ahead and duplicate this with Shift D. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit and just put it next to it. Ooh, that's looking pretty cool. Something like that. And then we can use a mirror modifier again to go ahead and mirror us across the head to give us a nice big quiff. Ooh, and that's looking pretty snazzy. And now I think let's go ahead and initially um, let's apply the subdivisions on both of these. And I just want to adjust the shape on this slightly. So control A, apply a scale, back into sculpt mode. And now that we've applied that subdivision, there should be a nice bit of geometry there for us to play with. And using the grab tool, you can just make those fine adjustments to get the general shape that you like. At this point, what I tend to do is to convert these all to a mesh. So I'm going to shift and click select them all. Right click, convert to mesh, so now you can see these all are nicely a mesh. And then we're going to join them up by selecting them all again. And then lastly, selecting the base of the hair here using Control J. We're going to go ahead and remesh just like we did in the last video. Remesh, turn off face sets. And perhaps we'll start with 0 0.02 to see how that looks. And that's not too bad, but I think I want something a little bit more higher resolution to avoid 
this uh, sort of you know boxy shape some of the edges here so perhaps I'll try 0.009 and when it comes to remeshing guys it will vary based on the size and shape of your model so you know just experiment with, experiment with this yourself little by little decreasing the size of those voxels till you find something that works for you and doesn't completely crash your computer <laughs> but I think something like that will do and now I just like to come in and using the smooth tool holding shift I'm just going to smooth these over to get rid of those hard edges here like this something like that and if you are still getting a lot of what almost looks like pixelation you can go ahead and increase your uh you know the density and decrease the voxel size a bit more but i think for the purposes of this control uh controller <laughs> the pur for the purposes of this tutorial this should look pretty fine or at least i hope and to give you a good example of how I like to do this. Okay, and there we have the stylized hair for this character. I hope uh, that was another insightful one for you today. And don't forget, feel free to experiment with this and create a variety of different styles and send them to me at keelanjohn underscore on Instagram because I'm keen to see what you guys come up with. But I think that's gonna just about do it for today's video, guys. And if you did enjoy, a cheeky like goes a long way to support me. And if you'd be interested in continuing your Blender journey in the next episode, we're going to be looking at painting and adding some shaders to our model to really bring them to life. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified when I upload a video. Other than that, as always, the source files for this will be over on the Patreon. But other than that, my name has been Keelan. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.